We ended part one by showing that the cross-section views of all three of the Giza Plateau pyramids can be derived directly from Metatron's cube, simply by tracking the intersections of critical circles, squares, triangles, and diagonals. Part two is going to show that the overhead view of the entire plateau has been encoded into the original design so that the actual pyramid positions can also be located purely by tracking those same basic geometrical intersections. Let's recap how by drawing a circle whose diameter is the base length of the Great Pyramid, duplicating those circles to find their vesica piscis points, and drawing a tangent across the top of all three, we create a square whose side is the half base of Khufu. And of course, it's just as easy to draw a square on the entire Khufu base. So, let's now draw a circle whose radius is the height of Menkore. We'll call that double Menkore, since the diameter is twice the height. Now, do the same with Kafre and Khufu. We can immediately see that the square of Khufu is intrinsically connected to the circle of Kafre, and it's divided into the ratio of 4 to 5. As was shown in Part 1, this corresponds exactly with the way the half base square of Menkore intersects with the circle height of Menkore in the same 4 to 5 ratio. Such a geometrically perfect ratio mirror connecting Khufu to Khafre and thence to Menkore is clear evidence of predetermined intentional design. But there's more. Let's locate the center of the Khufu base square by drawing its two diagonals and the horizontal diameter of the double Khufu circle. Raise the square so that their centers coincide, just as Grant and Green did in their Da Vinci Vitruvian Man solution, and we see a visual representation of the age-old squaring the circle conundrum. If we use the angle we derived in part one, accurate and GeoGebra software to 17 decimals, the circumference of the circle is, as near as humanly possible, exactly equal to the perimeter of the square. Now, draw another Menkore circle whose center is at the base of the construction itself. Find its vesica piscis points and draw a horizontal line. Note the four other places where the original Menkore circle intersects Khufu's half base square and draw vertical lines through those points. Remember, it's all about the fundamental square, circle, triangle, diagonals connections. Finally, mark vertical lines at the corners of the Great Pyramid itself. Now, the next level of the magic begins. Drawing an exact perimeter around the three pyramids on the plateau, we're going to consult the first major survey done by Flinders Petrie from 1880 to 1882. He meticulously recorded the height and width of the Giza Plateau, from the northeast corner of Khufu to the southwest corner of Menkore, and determined its ratio to be, essentially, 1.222. The smallest possible integers which express this same ratio are 11 over 9 but for reasons that will become clear in part three of this series, when we see the entire plateau layout is defining musical intervals, we're going to choose a multiple pertinent to Pythagorean tuning, 528 over 432. As promised, you're about to witness something truly amazing. We're drawing red lines to mark the west bases of Menkore, Kafre, and Khufu. Blue lines to mark their east bases. Green to mark the north bases. 
and orange to mark the south bases. Overlaying these overhead views of the entire plateau onto the cross-section views revealed in part one, we see that several of these overhead colored lines correspond precisely with certain lines we just drew through the cross-section intersections. All the west base lines, this east base line, these north and south base lines, and very specifically here, where we see a key clue that the north base line of Menkore overhead view is the vesica line marking the center of Menkore in the cross-section view. It's an obvious giveaway, telling us we're on the right track, that these two viewpoints are intimately tied together. Let us count the ways. The double Menkore circle intersects the Khufu half base square, which coincides with Khafre's west base. We don't yet know any other Khafre markers, but they're coming. As we just showed, the north base of Menkore overhead is the vesica line marking its center cross-section. Since the Menkore base is a square, we need only draw a 45 degree diagonal line from its southwest corner to locate its opposite corner, thus identifying the east base line. Obviously, now the south and west bases complete the overhead view of Menkore, G3. This other point, where the double Menkore circle intersects the Khufu half base square, has produced a vertical line which precisely coincides with the west base of Khufu, overhead view. Clearly, the north and east bases are bounded by the perimeter of the plateau, so it only requires us to draw a 45 degree diagonal line to identify its corner and complete Khufu G1 with its south base line. We now draw a half base square of Khafre cross-section view and note where it intersects the double Menkore circle. The dotted line that implies connecting those two points coincides precisely with the south base of Khafre overhead view. So we now know both the south and west bases, thus identifying Khafre's lower left corner. There are just two more circles to go. One is diameter 528, the length of the plateau. The other is exactly half of that, 264, giving us the precise overhead view center of the plateau. You may recall from Green's discoveries in his YouTube Bard Code series that the main key to solving Shakespeare's Great Pyramid Codes embedded in the works is encrypted into page 264 of the first folio. No man must know. No man must know. The numbers altered. No man must know. All that remains is to draw a diagonal line at 45 degrees from the southwest corner of Khafre. Where it intersects the half plateau circle marks the precise center of the square base of Khafre and thereby identifies its opposite corner. And there you have it. All three pyramids, G1, G2, G3, but this time their overhead views have now been derived purely from the intersections of squares, circles, triangles, and diagonals, just as was accomplished in part one through their cross-section views. Could there possibly be any more magic? Let's return to where we started, Metatron's cube, and pause for a moment to remember the geometric perfection revealed in part one, where every intersection of the Khufu half base square and the double Menkore circle was precisely derived from the original Metatron circles. Such a perfect geometric construction 
demands a huge paradigm shift in the official story in order to fully encompass what we're witnessing here. For these discoveries inherently prove the pyramids could not have been three separate constructions by three generations of pharaohs working independently of each other. Clearly the entire plateau was intentionally designed from the start to be one genius masterwork whose structure requires a far deeper recognition of ancient wisdom than has so far been suspected. Yet we've still seen only a glimpse of the magic this enigmatic wonder holds for us. In part three, we begin to hear whispers of the eternal music it has been silently singing to us for countless generations, quite possibly eons, literally carved in stone, just waiting for us to awaken.